Good afternoon, everybody. David Schuster here on Take Action News. A welcome to everybody who's listening to us on our syndicated stations all across the country and around the world, and all of you who are watching us on our YouTube channel, Take Action News TV. I want to give a special, special shout-out uh, to uh, everybody. Go to weactradio.com. Our colleague here in D.C., Rock Newman, did a phenomenal, phenomenal interview with Charles Ramsey, the hero this week in Cleveland. you got to listen to this. Go to weactradio.com. Make sure you check out the videos. that will be posted online. Just great stuff from the Rock Newman Show. Here on Take Action News, we're going to take you through some of the events this week and what you can do to influence uh, outcomes. Uh, one of the more intriguing stories we're going to be talking about ahead is the Republican effort in Congress to block President Obama's nominee for the Environmental Protection Agency, you know, that agency that keeps our air and water safe. Well, Republicans are blocking the nominee because they say she's been vague on policy positions. Of course, she's provided 123 pages of answers detailing her policy positions. What's really going on? Charlie Mitchell's going to join us. We're also going to talk with uh, Daniel Marins about some of the developments in that awful, awful tragedy in Bangladesh and how Americans can, uh, can change things to try to prevent this from happening again, in part through the purchases that we all make. But I want to start with the, the big uh, political news on Capitol Hill this week was Benghazi. It was back on September 11th. Last year, when four Americans, including the U.S. Uh, M, uh, ambassador to Libya, were killed uh, in Benghazi, Libya, this was the subject of a lot of um, discussion at the time. It was right before the U.S. presidential election. There were allegations made that perhaps the Obama administration was slow to respond to the unfolding events in Tripoli. Uh, Republicans have been claiming ever since that there's this broad conspiracy, an impeachable, an impeachable offense by the Obama administration to cover up what really happened. And this week, Republicans who have the majority in Congress, they were able to put a couple people in front of a House committee to talk about the story. And so that, of course, brought more attention to Benghazi and had a lot of people go over it again. Well, not a lot came out from this hearing, except some of the personal eyewitness accounts and feelings of some of the people who were in Libya at the time. And some of those feelings were articulated by Gregory Hicks, who was a so-called whistleblower in this case. He described the personal thoughts and feelings that he had when he was getting the news. Listen. None of us should ever again experience what we went through in Tripoli and Benghazi. Gregory Hicks was Ambassador Chris Stevens' deputy. He recounted talking to the ambassador shortly after the attack began, likely the last American to speak to him. I got the ambassador on the other end. And he said, Greg, we're under attack. The line cut out, and Hicks, who was at the embassy in Tripoli, said he scrambled to get help. He wanted to send a U.S. Special Forces team to Benghazi, but the four-man military team was ordered to stand down. How did the personnel react to being told to stand down? They were furious. The Pentagon says the team was needed to secure the embassy in Tripoli and would not have gotten to Benghazi in time to help. Several hours after talking to the ambassador, Hicks received another call. I think it's the saddest phone call I've ever had in my life. He told me that Ambassador Stevens had passed away. So that's part of the report from ABC's uh, Jonathan Carl, who summarized some of the highlights from the hearing. Again, there you have a whistleblower from the State Department who's claiming that the Obama administration was late to send help. You have the Obama administration saying, well, wait a second, even if the Pentagon had sent help immediately, there's no way that these special forces would have gotten there in time, in part because uh, what the mob was doing is the mob was setting fire, they were firing mortars, developments were happening very quickly. There's some theory among Republicans that, oh, well, the United States should have just flown some sort of jet fighter above the scene to somehow scare off uh, this attack, um, which is that's not sort of a traditional way of, of trying to deal with things.